Salvage in Star Citizen is one of the freshest gameplay loops, and the Drake Vulture aims to democratise that, offering an entry-level salvage ship to those interested in working their way up as a breaker. Which naturally prompts the question, how does the Vulture perform in-game? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Drake Vulture, which is described on the Star Citizen website as a light salvage ship. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split across five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it, so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. And starting the tour for the Vulture, we enter from the rear of the ship. On either side there's a button which deploys the ramp which takes you into the rear cargo bay. At the front of the cargo bay is the salvage module which ejects these 1SCU crates, but can also be used to fabricate multi-tools. On the sides are some component access, and at the back is a cargo grid for 12 SCU of cargo. Moving through the door at the front, there's a ladder which takes you up into the habitation section. There's access to a rack for inventory, as well as a small drake cabin, where there's a bed, a kitchenette, and some more component access. Off to the side, there's what's described as a restroom. Moving through the final door to the front of the Vulture, takes you into the cockpit itself. There's more component access at the back, as well as a chair for the pilot. Out to the front left or port side, there's a second entry point into the Vulture, which is a glass door and a ladder, which is particularly handy when getting into a full ship. And then finally at the front is the pilot's chair. Since people will mention it in the comments, the Drake Vulture is obviously not a combat ship, it's an industrial vessel. But since it does have some defences and armament attached, it might be helpful to still explore the combat performance. That armament consists of two size 1 Bulldog laser repeaters on size 1 gimbal mounts. As you might expect, that's really not a lot of firepower, but is sufficient for the Vulture to at least be able to engage very low risk NPC targets. The gimbals have a generous fire arc, which is much needed, but even so, engaging fast moving targets will be a challenge. Defensively, the Vulture carries two size 1 shield generators, which is comparable to a light or medium fighter, and gives the Vulture a small window in which to try to escape from a fight. Of course, in the unlikely event that the Vulture comes out on top, the destroyed ship can usually be salvaged for some delicious scrap. Visibility out of the front of the Vulture is… not terrible. The glass cockpit shows out to the front where the salvage target is likely to be, and there is some glass out to the sides for peripheral visibility, but with the placement of struts, cockpit screens above and below, and the long arms out to the front, the Vulture retains an industrial feel from the pilot's chair. And those long arms are symptomatic of another challenge, which is that the cockpit is sighted a little further back from the front of the ship, with the salvage claws being deceptively long. That makes it quite easy for an inexperienced pilot to nudge the front of the ship against an obstacle, or even worse, the salvage target, throwing it into a spin. After a little practice, it's something that you might get used to, but only after you've bumped into a few things first. 
The Vulture has a top speed of 1114 meters per second, which is surprisingly quick for an industrial ship. But the performance of the engines and brakes mean that getting to and slowing down from that speed takes a long time. As in, even with use of some boost, you probably need about 25 kilometers to decelerate from full speed. Coupled with a fairly slow turn rate, the Vulture feels like an industrial ship, but that's probably appropriate. Expect to drift through tight turns rather than threading the needle. The stock Quantum Drive is very slow, especially if you need to travel long distances, and at least within Stanton, desperately needs swapping out. As a fairly low-end industrial ship, the Vulture is pretty cheap to repair and refuel, usually charging in the hundreds to low thousands of Alpha UEC to do so. And as you might expect, the Vulture has big money-making potential. The main way to make cash is through salvaging derelict ships, either through taking a contract to find one, or just by heading out into the verse and looking for something to break. Through the cargo attachments on the deck, the Vulture can bring back about 90,000 Alpha UEC of scrap, although experienced pilots can bring back upwards of 150k for a truly full haul. That's fairly reasonable for a relatively simple and safe way of earning credits. Naturally, that 12 SCU cargo grid could be used for buying trade materials, although the margins probably mean that's not worth it. Likewise for combat contracts and delivery missions. In theory, lower end contracts are possible with the Vulture, but there would be much better ships to choose for those missions. By way of loadout changes, my recommendation would be to swap the Quantum Drive to a Zephyr for a good mix of range and speed, and pretty much leave the rest of the ship as stock, since it doesn't really matter. The bread and butter for the Vulture is entry level salvage gameplay, and that's compelling enough to warrant trying out. The loop is an interesting mix of mining and cargo juggling, between the satisfying laser beam that dissolves the hull into scrap, and then moving the boxes around in the back. Some people hate it, but for others it adds variety to the gameplay loop, and feels more involved for the scrapper. The inclusion of a simple crafting mechanic that lets players use scrap to build a multi-tool is handy, and allows for a little forgiveness if you forgot to take your tractor beam with you. Moreover, the use of the cargo grid makes for interesting expandability with different group sizes. If you have a second person, they could help move cargo in the back of the ship, or even move cargo to a dedicated hauler to considerably increase the salvage capacity for a single run. That's a nice touch. On the positive side, there is a bed for logging out, which offers a bit of convenience for a self-contained industrial ship out in the stars, and whilst this is a Drake ship, it somehow feels a little less like it's held together with duct tape than some of the other Drake offerings. But there are some gripes too. The 12 SCU of cargo storage takes up less than two thirds of the physical space in the back, so experienced players can almost double what the Vulture naturally stores. It's obvious that one third of the length of the ship has been left clear for a walkway to the rear ramp, but given that the Vulture has a second entry and exit point in the cockpit, that really isn't necessary and most pilots will fill up the rear cargo bay anyway, so having a cargo grid use the full rear bay would make more sense. And the headlamps are just not bright enough, which isn't a complaint on many ships, but for a hull scraper that spends its time in the dark of space breaking up ship hulls, being able to actually see what you're doing is kind of important. Both of those elements could be so easily fixed, which would make for a big quality of life improvement for the Vulture. Which brings us to price. At time of recording, the Vulture is not yet available for purchase in-game, only for real cash. And with that real cash price being $150 to $175, depending on whether that cash is new, the Vulture is quite expensive for what you get, which is essentially a salvage starter ship. Don't get me wrong, it's a similar price to the Prospector, which is a fair comparator as an entry-level industrial ship, 
and they are both great ways of earning funds in-game through non-combat gameplay loops. But as the entry point into the salvage loop, it's an expensive price unless you're a player who knows that salvage is going to be what they want to spend a lot of their time in-game doing. So for most people, I'd suggest waiting for the in-game purchase to be available and grabbing a Vulture through that. After all, the salvage gameplay loop is pretty interesting for non-combat players, so well worth a try. But do you agree? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the video comments. As always, if you're not yet subscribed, you might consider it if you've got this far, to give YouTube the nudge to suggest similar videos to you in the future. And it would also be really helpful to me if you would press that like or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most so I can focus on making the most relevant videos in future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.